Good morning and welcome to everybody. Those here in the building and those watching via the internet, we've come to remember a special event that sparked the beginning of the disciples' ministry, which hasn't stopped yet. Let's worship the Lord on this Pentecost Sunday. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you servants. Praise his name. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Let's pray. God at Pentecost, you spoke through flame and fire. Your advocate spoke truth into the world. Your helper offered peace to every troubled heart. As we gather in this place, through the power of your spirit, may, be, may we be open to hear and obey your call. And may you hear our heart language of prayer and praise as we worship you this morning. Amen. Let's stand and sing our first song. <clears throat> in your empowering the grace graces you give each of us the grace which you give to your church the chatter of the young the wisdom of the old the texts of the teenagers the words of the elders we rejoice in the diversity of your choice church the gifts of graces you give the challenges of the prophets the hopes of the dreamers those who sing songs of praise and those who serve in our, 
serve you in your mission in the local community and the wider world. Yet often we take these gifts for granted. We forget, forget that they came from you and we think we don't need any help from you. We start to think we can do everything by ourselves and become proud of what we have achieved. We start to put ourselves on a pedestal and believe people should show us respect. Then when things don't go the way we planned, we get upset and take it out on those around us. We don't show love. It happens all too often, but still you love us and you gave us your Holy Spirit to prompt us to return to you and seek your forgiveness. When we come back to you and confess that we have failed and seek your forgiveness, you welcome us back, wrap your arms around us and wash us clean. You are an awesome God, deserving of all praise and glory, and we thank you for your love for us. Amen. It's time for the children's video. If the children want to come down the front for us, children want to come down the front and sit down here on the steps or on the seats, whichever you prefer. This morning's video is about the first Pentecost when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. So let's watch the video. Pentecost explained in three minutes. We read about the story of Pentecost in the book of Acts in the Bible, which was written by St. Luke to explain the journey and life of the church right after Jesus ascended into heaven. Remember that from our last video? Yeah, so... Pentecost in the Greek language, Pentecoste, actually means 50th because in the Jewish tradition, which Jesus and his disciples were a part of, Pentecost happened 50 days after the Passover. You know, that's when Jesus and his disciples had that last supper. Nowadays in the church, Pentecost signifies the final day of the season of Easter where we've been celebrating Jesus' resurrection and ascension into heaven. We sometimes call Pentecost the birthday of the church. We do this because it's kind of like the day the church was born. It's the day the disciples and Mary were filled with the Holy Spirit. So, what actually happened on Pentecost? Well, all the disciples were together in a house in Jerusalem when suddenly a sound like a crazy intense wind came and filled the place. Then, what looked like fire came down and rested on each of their heads. At that point, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, which allowed them to speak in all different languages. Yay for low teachers! Viva! So at that time in Jerusalem, there were heaps of people from all different nations. Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Porteus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. No Australians, unfortunately. Which is weird, because every time I travel, I always seem to run into Australians. Anyway, when these people heard the sound, they came running to the house where the disciples were. And they were super confused because they could all hear the disciples speaking in their own languages. Huh? So, Peter gets up and explains to the crowd, <clears throat> Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and for your children and for all people, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So 3,000 people dedicated their lives to Jesus that day. 3,000! And people kept coming to the church from that day onwards. Until today, 2,000 years later, there are over 2.5 billion people following Jesus. So, what does this mean for us today? Well, remember how Jesus promised to his disciples, I will be with you always, when he ascended into heaven? This is him following through on that promise. He sent his Holy Spirit to fill each of us up. 
You may not see us with tongues of fire on our head or speaking 20 different languages, but even better than that, you will see us with patience, kindness, joy, love, faithfulness, peace, and goodness. Happy birthday, church. Okay, let's pray. Lord, may the children who watch this video this morning come to know you and follow you. May they be shining lights to those they meet and bring others to come to know how special you are. In Jesus' name, amen. If you want to go back to your seats now as we sing our next song. Stand and sing. Salvation belongs to our Lord, who sits upon the throne, and up to the Lamb, praise and glory, wisdom and quite a number of announcements this morning. Uh, there's copies of the In Touch for anyone who didn't receive it on the email. Uh, they're up on the table at the back, so grab it on the way out. Um, Gary would like to see anyone who is interested in being involved in Sunday school after the service uh, to discuss that in the chapel after the service. So anyone that's interested in that, please see Gary. Um, adult fe Fellowship is, has a meeting on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 1.30 in the hall. Uh, anyone, everyone is invited to attend and encouraged to attend. There's two things to note for next Saturday the 11th. There's a morning tea and a musical hour by the Bramble Bay Accords at 10am. Uh, cost of that is 10 dollars and RSVP is there or just turn up? Just turn up so anyone can come on that day and following that at two o'clock we have Gary's induction as Minister of this fellowship so it would be love to see everyone here. Um, this Thursday, starting this Thursday uh, there will be a prayer and praise evening in the chapel at seven o'clock um, if you are free on Thursday, Gary would love to see you here. And Gary is planning to hold a barbecue for families, uh, a barbecue lunch uh, on the 18th, Saturday the 18th. Uh, there's more details regarding it in the in touch. So that's all the off uh, announcements. Uh, offering. We'll take up the offering now. Thank you.
We remember the gifts you bestowed on your disciples on that first Pentecost Sunday, which you still pour out on your disciples today. We offer this portion of our finances, gifts and talents back to you to be used in the growing of your kingdom in this community around us. May it be used wisely, guided by your wisdom, in the precious name. Amen. We're going to stand and sing. morning. It's all right, I'm just getting ready here. I'd like to see if the families could bring their kids up and sit right up here with us, please. There's a reason for it. If the families could come up with their kids so that we can share communion together up here, but I just want the kids to be up here because it's very important that we recognise our children. Some of them want to get up here anyway. It doesn't really matter whether... You can just sit down there somewhere or sit there. Just be close. 
It's a very important time as we come around the table for communion. Now, I'm just going to share in a little bit of a story around it first. And that is that when, like the cartoon we saw or that video we saw, Jesus came uh, and, and ate with his, with his disciples before, and it said there 50 days before he, the Holy Spirit came into the world. The other thing is that the Holy Spirit was already here because the Spirit of God moved on the waters in Genesis. The Trinity was already here. Jesus was already with God. He was the word when God spoke in Genesis because Jesus came as the word of God, didn't he? So we have here today the elements of something that would resemble a little bit of the idea what Jesus was doing when he came with his disciples and sat in that room and ate and explained to them there's going to be a few things happening soon. And some of those things are going to be not real comfortable. And then he said to, the, to them as they went around the table and, and he gave bread and he shared, they shared the wine. He then said to uh, Judas, he said, go and do what you've got to do. Because there was a plan. Judas had a plan that he was going to go and do what he had to do to, to sell Jesus out for a few coins. So the story is quite a big story and it leads up to Jesus going on the cross. And he went on the cross because of us. But one of the things that happened just before then was they were trying to get the children away from Jesus. The disciples are saying, get, get the kids away. Take them away. And Jesus, what did he say? He said, bring the children to me. Because it's a faith like they have is what we need to have as adults. That's the sort of faith we need, the faith of children. They trust you. They'll jump off things to, and you let you catch them because they trust you. How much trust do we have in God? Do we trust God? Or do we just, do we just go to church? We need to have a faith like the kids. And that's why I like the kids out here because they give us hope. They're our future, but they're also our present. And I love the sound of kids being here. Ever walk into a church that doesn't have kids? Doesn't feel the same, does it? And I want these kids here to realise that Jesus did these things so that all of us could be saved. That we could all have life because of him. And today we're just going to represent that here. This is what this is about, okay? We're going to do this today. We have a bit of bread, we have a little bit of grape juice, and we just share that time and remember what Jesus has done because it's so glorious what he's done. And I want us to be able to remember Jesus this way. Today you're going to stay in your seats, okay? We're going to come to you and share these things. I need, all I need is people's hands up when we're ready. Hands up if you're gluten-free, because we do have a gluten-free one. But I'm just going to pray. Lord, come and pray with me. Kid, just sit there and pray. Lord, we pray for these elements right now. We actually give these things to you, Father, and we ask you to bless them so that as we have this together as a community, we'll be blessed because of what you have done for us in Jesus' name. Jesus came the night before he was betrayed. He shared these items amongst his disciples. He took the bread and he got the bread and he broke the bread and said, this is my body that I give for you and I do this because I love you. And then he took the glass, which had the grape juice or wine in it, and he said, drink this for your salvation. 
It's in my blood that I shed for you. And this helps represent the blood of Jesus. The, the one that died for us so that we would have life and life everlasting. We remember these things. He said, do this until I come again. Do this and remember to me until I come again. Because I'm going to be with you always, Jesus said. And he can only do that through his Holy Spirit, which we represent today with the story of the Pentecost. I'm just going to ask now for the people to come that are going to take these around. I don't know which one is the gluten. Someone will have to pick that one. This one? Yeah. Okay, someone want to take the gluten bread and some glasses. Any hands up if you're gluten, please. And I want you to hang on to these things until we do it together. That's the gluten. Um, someone will follow you with the glasses. So, someone will follow you with the glasses. So everyone will have a glass and you just share the bread to the gluten. And, so just go around and share the bread and the wine. Or the, do the kids at the front here if you like, someone. Just anyone who's got their hand up needs the gluten bread, that's all. It's the only difference. Like everyone's going to hang on to it, yeah, until we do it together, okay? Please be in prayer about what's happening in your own lives right now as we come to this point where we eat and drink together. It's so important you get your heart right. Just make sure Liz has got something. Keyboard Liz. Make sure Liz has got hers.
If anyone's here gluten-free, just take the gluten-free one. Let's all share together as a community, as Christ did with his disciples. This is his body that he broke for you, and this is his blood that he shed for you. We do these things now in remembrance of him for what he did for us on the cross, and the rising of him from the death is the key to the whole thing about having life. So let's just lift up Jesus to to, uh, each other and to, to him right now as we eat and drink. Just put your glasses in behind the seats. Thank you. Just before you go, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer. Just before everyone moves, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer right now. It's the old tradition one. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against them. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you say, Amen. Someone like to put the cloth back, huh? Yeah, kids, you can go back if you like. Won't be long or we'll have Sunday school happening. Let's pray. When we look at our world, we see war, conflict, hatred between people of different ethnic groups and ideas. We especially think of the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. We think of those who are, in the, who are coming to grips with the senseless killings in the shootings in the States last week. May you, Lord, touch the hearts of all involved. As with the Spirit we pray, only love can conquer hate. When we look at our country, we continue to pray for our new government. We pray that they will govern wisely and that they may seek your wisdom as they govern. We continue to lift up those who are still working to get the houses repaired following the floods. And we rejoice with Graham as as his house is now complete and he is back in his home. We continue to pray for those who are sick due to the COVID and the flu. May your healing hand rest on them. We pray for our church. We give you thanks for bringing Gary to us and for his leadership he brings. May we as a fellowship seek to follow you in everything we do and reflect you to the community around us. When we look at ourselves, Lord, may we continue to grow more like you every day. May your Holy Spirit prompt us to spend time in your word and have daily conversations with you, just as Jesus did when he was here on earth. This is the only way we can get to know you more and do the things that you want us to do. May we be open to your leading, O Lord. 
our God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. How great is our God. just about to have the Bible reading but before we do let's pray Lord as we hear your word read to us today and as Gary expounds your word may that you have given him may we be open to hear what you would say to each of us individually Amen Good morning everyone and good morning to everybody joining us at home today. Our Bible reading this morning comes from the Acts of the Apostles and it's the it's the Pentecost story chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, 
There were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of those who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us is hearing them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And these are the words of the Lord. Some would say that this is the start of the church. I would say it's the start of the mission of the church. It's more the fact that the church was there, but now we have a an impact to us that gives us the power to be able to have the mission of the church go out and do what it has to do. Because without the Holy Spirit, it makes things very difficult to be able to do mission because the Holy Spirit works in us and through us and gives us those gifts and, and enhances our gifts to be able to do the work of God. Holy Spirit's here to bless, bless the God, bless God. Jesus said, I'll leave my spirit with you and I'll always be with you through with the Holy Spirit. What the disciples experienced was something for them out of this world. They had never experienced what they did at Pentecost. They felt the whole room move the wind, the, the whole thing of the Holy Spirit coming into that room was something amazing. And so the disciples were there and it was interesting. They stayed there and obeyed what was told to them. Please stay there until the Spirit of my Spirit comes. They were... The big O, obedient. Now, that's hard for us sometimes, isn't it, to be obedient? I know I struggle sometimes being very obedient. And um, and, and when we do struggle, you know, God's always there for us. But being obedient is really hard. You know, obeying every actual rule. Not sort of just going, oh, I've obeyed a few of them. You know, I've done pretty well. No, he he says, I want you to obey me. He said, stay in that room until the Spirit of God comes. 
and they obeyed. And then God sent his spirit into that room, which then empowered the disciples to start the mission of the church. They felt some of that power when Jesus was here because Jesus had the spirit. And they saw the miracles that Jesus and even they performed while Jesus was here. But to experience it without Jesus being there and having that experience of the Holy Spirit empowering them was something new. And in fact, they couldn't believe that they could speak and they could speak in other languages. You know, like that was a sign of what was going on there. And here we have all the disciples sort of, what, what's going on? What's happening? And then Peter, suddenly God said to Peter, I want you to talk. I want you to say something to these people. And he got up and he spoke. He got up and spoke. Last thing he said was, before the coming of this great and glorious day of the Lord. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 3,000 gathered, got saved. People were coming to know Jesus every day because they called on the name of Jesus. You know, we get distracted today. We get to call on the name of lots of things. But those things don't get us saved. And they don't help us. We get distracted with all sorts of things in our lives. We need to be distracted towards Jesus. And we need to call on the name of Jesus. Because only through him do we have everlasting life. Only through Jesus can we actually get to talk to God? Only through Jesus can anything happen in a relationship with God. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way. The world keeps inventing all sorts of ways to God. There is no other way, only through Jesus Christ. And I know there's people out there that will probably think, not necessarily in this room, but listening, that may think differently. They may think there is other ways to God. But I can tell you now, the Bible says there's only one way, and it's pretty straight. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can get to God except through me. And it comes back to what we had before with the kids. Our faith must be simple. Let's not complicate it. I went and did Bible college, and a few people here have, and I got a degree in theology. And you know what? I could have let that degree change me. But I just did not want that degree and those big words and all the stuff that we learnt to change me in the sense of what I believe basically. Our faith is very simple. It's childlike, Jesus says. Childlike faith. In other words, trust me, don't matter what. You know, I remember my kids used to trust that Dad was going to catch them off the, jumping off the wall. And I'd be going, oh, no, don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you'll be right. Oh, off they come. You know, they trusted me. And through that, I, I actually started thinking, you know what, that's what God wants us like. Just trust him. Believe and trust. This day started the mission of the church. The church completely changed from this day on. The Christian faith was born... No longer was it just a Jewish faith or a faith that was part of Israel, 
or Ju Judaism. No longer was it just for a, one group of people. It was for everybody in the world. And that's why they could speak all the languages of the world, except Australian. <laughs> Don't know what happened there. Maybe there's no Aussies over there at the time. If they were, they're probably an Aboriginal, and uh, the Aboriginals have different languages as well. So <laughs> maybe there was Aboriginals there. Who knows? But I think it's interesting that they could speak all these languages, and God was saying, Look, I want you to go out into the world and preach the gospel and make disciples. Go out. Let's get the whole world knowing Jesus. No longer was it just a confined religion. The curtain in the temple tore. It tore. As Jesus died on that cross. That was the covenant torn. A new covenant I give you. And this is the new covenant where we have the Holy Spirit. And individually we can come to know Jesus. Just because someone in your family is a believer doesn't mean everyone in the family is a believer. We all get the opportunity to follow Jesus ourselves. But we come together as a community because we gather that way and we encourage each other and build each other up. That's why negativity in the church is no good. Because you know what? I could probably point out so many faults in every one of you and you could probably sit there and go, well, I know a lot of faults about Gary already. He's been here a month. And we could pull each other apart, couldn't we? We could be like lions in a den, just... <laughs> without any problem at all. But wouldn't it be better if we come and encourage everybody on their good points? And so that people will be encouraged and built up instead of tearing down. I only have to walk out there and get torn down. I don't need the church to do it too. What we've got to do is be proactive in, in, in setting examples for people, showing people that, you, that we love each other. That's how the early church came about. So after Pentecost, the early church used to meet in the courtyards of the temple. In other words, in the mall, right? Or in the shopping mall. And they met there and people saw the Christians meeting and going, these people, look at them. They love each other. There's something about them. I want to know what that is. And they come in and they want to know. And it wasn't because they had the fancy preachers and the great musicians and the great singers, you know. It wasn't anything to do with any of that. It was all about love. All about love. And how we treated each other. That is so important. Reconciliation with each other. And then you can reconcile with God. What did Jesus say as one of the commands? Love your God with all your heart, soul and mind. And love your neighbour as you love yourself. It's all about loving each other, isn't it? You know, if, if we don't love each other, then we've got problems. I want us to try and break down any problems we have with each other in this place. If we want to go ahead as a church and grow, you need to reconcile with each other. If you've got a problem with someone in this place, please go and speak to them. Try and reconcile it. Even if they don't know that you don't know, they, that you knew something. You know? If it's an issue you have with somebody and they, you know, you just go and say to them, look, you know, I'm really sorry. I just want to be, I want to be a loving friend. It makes a difference. And God's spirit will move amongst us. Just as he moved amongst these disciples, as they loved each other, in this upper room. The Spirit of God came upon them. And I'd love to see the Spirit of God come upon us. 
Not little flames, because that might burn the roof. <laughs> and I think some of the kids would be going, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that flame. Oh, can I grab that? But we need the Spirit of God to come upon us so that the mission of this church was going to be stronger. We've got, look, we've got so many advantages here. A lovely building, all right? We've got Christmas lights. <laughs> the best in the area. So I've been told. I haven't seen them yet. But I've been told. Is that right, Paul? Best in the area? Best in Brisbane. Queensland. Anyone for Australia? Anyone? Anyone? We've got so many things going on here that are an advantage. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to move in this place by showing each other love. And acknowledging when people have got talents. And if you've hurt somebody in this place, I said, go and see them. Put them aside, have a cuppa, have a chat. It's, you know, the hardest word to say is sorry, like the Fonz used to do. Who remembers watching Happy Days? And Fonzie used to have to say, sorry, sometimes. And how hard was it for it to get it out? <laughs> you know that word? And they go, no, 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 what is it? <laughs> sorry. If I've offended you, sorry. How can we do something to get things better? Sorry. God wants to hear us say sorry to him as well for the things that we do against God. See how this story not only is about the Holy Spirit coming, but it's about the mission of this church. And if we want to go ahead, we're going to have to allow the Spirit to come in this place. And when the Spirit comes in this place, that's going to, he's going to change lives, just like he did with the disciples. And Peter's, there's going to be more than one Peter in the room. It's going to be able to stand up and say, you must follow Jesus. Anyone who calls upon his name, the Lord will, be, will save. Notice it didn't say certain people. It said anyone. And it doesn't matter how you are, who you are, or where you've come from. So we need to follow the example of these disciples. We need to come to Jesus in the form of being obedient. We need to come to Jesus every day. It's not a, it's not a, a one-off event. We need to seek Jesus every day. Seek the Lord. Just keep seeking him. And I know, you know, sometimes you've got to go and talk to somebody and that's good. Because that's what it's about. Talking to other people and seeking the Lord. And that's what it's about, being a community. That's why the church is a community. What sort of a relationship would it be if we didn't talk to God? Jesus said, I'm the, I'm the bridegroom. And you're my bride. You imagine a husband and wife just doesn't talk? Well... I've seen that. <laughs> Husband and wives not talking. Don't last long. The relationship sort of wears out after a while. And that's the same as what happens with God. When have you sat down seriously and talked to God? Or is it just one of those little quick prayers? You know, blah, 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 done. Oh, thanks for the food, Lord. Oh, done. You know, so some of these little prayers that we do. No, I'm, I'm, I do. When have you seriously sat down and cried and said, God, here I am. This is me, Lord. I've got heaps of issues. Take me. Do what you have to. But I'm yours. That's what God wants, our hearts. Our heart-fed thoughts. 
And that's how we need to be with each other too. We need to be real with each other. Let's not be fake anymore. Let's be real and embrace each other with the love of God. I'm just going to ask now if you just come up, stand up now and just walk across the room and just hug someone. If you don't want to be hugged, it's, that's okay because of COVID, that's fine. But if you would like to hug, get up and hug someone. Brace them in the peace of God. Just shake their hand if you have to. Uh, yes, we're getting close now, yep. Thanks, mate. Did a good this morning, did good. Has somebody hugged Liz yet? Someone needs to hug Liz. Okay, loving church. Okay, you loving church, you. How does it feel? How do you feel right now? (laughs) Isn't it feel good just to love and hug? It makes a difference, doesn't it? Let's be more of a huggy church. I know we've got to watch all these stupid viruses and things. But, you know, even shaking someone's hand, just saying, you know, be really welcoming. I love it. I love it when we get together and share the peace of God with each other. We're going to uh, finish now with a prayer. I'm meeting in the uh, other room out there, the chapel. I'm seriously looking for Sunday school teachers and stuff but I've got a plan it's not going to be difficult to do but I need if anybody wants to be involved if they like to come out there and we'll talk about how we do this on a, some sort of a uh, roster system and also uh, I'd like one of the elders or two to come and sit out the front here and pray with people uh, have we got an elder that could do that that could come out and pray with people as yes thank you you like to come and just sit out there here. When people, when I finish the service, I'll be heading that way. I can talk to people later, but we'll have an elder here to pray with you if you're sincerely needing prayer and that stuff. I've found every each week there's people needing to have that prayer, so that would be great if we uh, had somebody out here to do that. And I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray right now that uh, we take on this Holy Spirit into our lives as a church. Lord, we ask now for your Spirit to touch each of us on our, on our heads right now, Lord. We just thank you that we could feel your presence on, in this room, particularly when we were hugging each other. And so, Father, allow your spirit to move in our lives on this Pentecost Sunday, but every day, as the mission of the church goes out into the community and reaches people afar with your spirit. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do our last song now. So stand if you're able and we'll sing this song. We are his children, the fruit of his suffering, saved and redeemed by his blood. Called to be holy, a light to the nations, bought with his power.
done for us and ask him to be part of your life every day. Seek him, seek the Lord. Amen. Thanks mate, that was great. Good service.